Oh, he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. He's gonna shove it. Man. All right. Welcome back to Longtime Viewers. I know it's been three months since I last did one of these. It was too much with the AEW and Impact reviews, but now that's out of the way, it's time to spray. We have made it to episode 65 of NWA TNA. Honestly, I've not been enjoying the show much lately. All of the entertaining characters and strange wrestlers have disappeared. And instead, we've been stuck with security tag teams and for some reason, Dusty Rhodes having an uncomfortable fugue of AJ Styles. Yeah, that isn't for me, but hopefully we can get past that. The episode starts with a wild slap nuts appearance. Hey, Jeff Jarrett. Didn't take long for that one. He says he's pissed off, as he always is, and he cuts a promo on Dusty Rhodes. He doesn't like it because Dusty is in the number one contender spot rather than him. Jarrett tells Dusty he doesn't need to say anything. Dusty's just desperate to speak with Jarrett continuing to cut him off. Jarrett rants about how Dusty is secretly a bad guy because he robbed Jarrett of his title shot. Jarrett says he's going to fight whoever wins out of Dusty and Styles, and then he drops the mic and walks off without Dusty being able to respond. In the back, AJ Styles is crying whilst Trinity pities him. AJ is crying because Vince Russo has disappeared on the night of his biggest match of his life. Sonny, don't look at my ass Yaki and Umaga walk up and say they've got his back. AJ mishears and thinks he got called an ace hole and yells at Trinity for even asking Siaki for help. Red Shirt Security and Don Callis out now for a tag match against Downtown D'Lo Brown and Chris Vaughn. The story here is that the two security teams have been fighting and Chris Vaughn is one of them. The Red Shirts broke the other Black Shirt Security guy's arm and TNA is refusing to pay the medical bills. D'Lo does not think it's right. Yeah, that is the storyline here. D'Lo starts with a dropkick on Kevin Northcutt. He tags in Jobber Vaughn, who flies in with a double axe. He tries an arm rigger, which is a fail, and tags are made. Dilo hits the Terminator with a double axe. Once again, he tags the Jobber back in. That seems unwise. The Jobber throws a couple of grazing drop kicks. He tries a diving Huracurana, but gets brutally powerbombed by the Terminator. It's at this point you really have to question why all these people are getting so much TV time on a cutting edge promotion. The Red Shirts smash him up in the corner. Northcutt hits a nice pump handle suplex, but he misses his leg drop and Vaughn throws another bad drop kick. The Tornado DDT doesn't work and he gets destroyed with an overhead suplex into the corner. A sweaty t-shirt is thrown at D'Lo. Vaughn thinks he makes the tag, which the ref doesn't see. D'Lo just says screw it and tells the security team shut up or I'll smack you one. D'Lo wipes the Terminator out with a crossbody. Meanwhile, Jesus, Northcutt kills the job with the Northcutt driver. You know what? Fun match. Love watching powerhouses throw jobbers about. The Red Shirts try a post-match attack. Eric Watts saves the day. Don't you just love him? Dusty has an interview with Mike Tanay. He calls Vince Russo evil and says he wants the title to mean more in wrestling. Dusty looks a thousand years old. He compares himself to George Foreman and says he's going to knock out Styles tonight. Jerry Lynn complains in the car park about the TNA management messing with him again. Says he's been sent home. Again. We've got an X Division title match now. Also on the line is the X Cup trophy. Chris Saban versus Shawn Michaels' cousin, Michael Shane. It's remarkable how little Saban has aged over the years. Saban with a nice first flurry of offense. Shane slows him down and throws him from the ring. They return to the ring with Shane getting a two from a snap slam. Saban comes back with a springboard spinning leg lariat for a double down. Saban's taken full control of a big boot and a springboard DDT now. Lots of reversals take place. Saban eventually hits the future shot for a two count. It's now Michael Shane's turn to come close with a powerbomb. Shane tries to use the belt, but he's not strong enough for referee Posey. Saban does the cradle shock as the dumbass ref gorms out whilst getting rid of the title belt. What is he looking at? Just a two. Wow, that looked dumb. Loads of pinning reversals now, ending with Michael Shane getting the three whilst pulling down Saban's knickers. He is now the X Division champion and the X Cup holder. In the back, it's gifted Glenn Gilberti. How is he gifted? They make fun of free live crew. Disco does an impression of Eminem saying, my name is. The master of the cab driver slam marches up angry that the New York crew beat him up with a chair last week. Disco says that they actually like him. and David Jung is almost close to being accepted into their stupid little group. Why would he want to be in the group? A six man elimination match now is the diamond man, the swing man and the how is he gifted man. They take on the free live crew. Mike Tanay proudly tells us that TNA have just upgraded to the best sound production available. 
Yet there's sound mistakes all over this show. Truth is winning and he tags the mold dog who immediately loses the advantage. He returns to hit a leg drop to the nutsack of the swingman. Gifted Glenn is scared of Conad. This match is not good at all. All Conad's pinning attempts look sloppy. Conad gets distracted by Gilberti on the outside and when he turns around he's eliminated by a double flat liner. Conad returns to trip Swinger up which allows Mold Dog to hit the pump handle slam. Johnny Swinger has been eliminated. Gilberti crawls into the ring and smacks the moldy one in his moldy nutsack and works with a diamond man. Mold Dog gets eliminated by a stunner into a super kick. I just don't know how to describe this guy, he's incredible, his talent is really shining through. Truth Power slams the gifted Glenn Gilberti, but he doesn't go for the pin. In fact, Disco is so gifted that he dodges a drop kick and nails a slow motion elbow drop. Truth replies with a scissors kick on Gilberti and the back sack and crack on the Diamond Man. And now he's gone. Of course Gilberti is the last man on the team. He's about to show us just how gifted he truly is. The master of the cab driver slam arrives at ringside to watch the match. Truth nails DDT for a double down. Truth gets up first but Disco throws him out the ring. Young's watching the fight on a chair. Gilberti tries to use Young as a human shield. So the Truth climbs up Young and dives over him. Truth wants to use the chair as a weapon but Young takes it away from him and throws it in his face. Gilberti rolls killings into the ring and the winner is the gifted Glenn Gilberti. That's how he's gifted. NWA Impact brings you the smack of the week. Sponsored by all new Blonde for Men. If you're a brown haired potter, put some blonde in it. It makes you look hotter. Oh man, this guy, Gangle Birdie, is so gifted. He's on the verge of greatness in TNA. He's winning all these big matches, man. He's even got his own cab driver, man. Oh man, the cab driver man just gave Truth a chair and he didn't charge a fare. And this man, Gil Birdie, has just pinned a former world champion. That's why he's gifted and his star has been lifted. That was the NWA TNA Smack of the Week, sponsored by Blonde Just For Men. Get it? Got it? Shove it. The New York guys run away from the cab driver guy. They are ungrateful. In the back, the new church is interviewed. As usual, they are feuding with Raven. Mitchell says every time Raven takes out a member of his new church, he'll just replace them with someone else. Mitchell says Raven will face sin, while Slash throws darts into his back. <laughs> so random. I love the wacky faces from Slash here too. Out now, it's Frankie, the future Kazarian, who is going for a ladies' man gimmick. He gives the cage dancer some roses. What a simp. He will take on the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. His storyline right now is that he is the Howard Power and he has crackhead followers. Despite being distracted by the women and his new gimmick, Kaz is on fire. He throws himself out the ring onto the crackhead crew and he slingshots back into the ring of the DDT. Daniels grabs his haircut to slow him down and he gets a two on an enziguri. A video shows that the Don't Look At My Ass crew are all in the car park waiting for Vince Russo to turn up. Daniels gets another two on a slingshot leg drop. This is a good match, but it's so distracting with all the cuts to the car park where literally nothing is happening. Kazarian hits a flipping axe kick for a two. He tries to fade to black, but it's reversed into a victory roll. It's not over, but it might be after the urinagi and the best moonsault ever. No, just a two. Kaz responds with a big pump kick, but the crackheads are on the ring apron. Daniels is thrown into the crackhead. Kaz hits the bat to the future, but no, foot on the rope. Once again, a crackhead interferes, which allows Daniels to hit the Angel's wings, and that is the free. Christopher Daniels isn't very grateful and says it's time he calls upon his brothers. Oh boy, Kane's going to be in the impact zone. Raven makes fun of the dart throwing incident from earlier in the show. He tells Pepsi Punk and Julio not to get involved in the match tonight. Punk starts saying something and the camera cuts away from him. Out now, it's the KID, Kid Cash and Abyss and a tag match against America's Most Wanted. The problem with this match is that Kid Cash is feuding with the referee, Terence Taylor, so it's all a bit unfocused. Cash and Abyss actually have double team moves, which is pretty sweet to see. Cash climbs up Abyss in the corner and dives off his shoulders, but he misses his moonsault. AMW work together to beat up Abyss with double flapjack. Storm dives out the ring on Cash and Harris hits a big diving lariat on Abyss. Harris wants to dive, but Abyss makes him fall in his nutsack. Randomly, Cash and Abyss hit a double team spear and clothesline combo. I'm amazed by just how much these two work together. They must have been putting in some hours behind the scene. Terry Taylor takes out Kid Cash. Abyss is left on his own and Harris hits a middle rope spear for just a two. Kid Cash comes back and tries a chair shot which is taken away by Terence Taylor. Cash kicks him in the back of the head. Cash and Harris fight whilst Abyss squashes Storm in the ring. Storm manages to nail Abyss for swinging new snapbreaker but no referee. 
When he turns around, it's the Smash Mouth from Kid Cash. A ref immediately runs out to count the pin, but it's shockingly just the two. Cash takes out the new referee. Harris takes the chair away and throws at him just as Storm hits the super kick into the chair into his face. That is the three. Pretty fun, pretty fun. I love the teamwork with both teams and Kid Cash is just being a complete dick which is entertaining. I wonder how far this Kid Cash and Abyss team can go. Cash is very frustrated with the loss. Oh, he shoves Abyss in his head and slaps him. Abyss thinks about choking him but I guess he's too much of an idiot and he leaves. Wait no, he returns and slaps Kid Cash. He tries a choke slam but gets kicked in the nutsack. The crowd are going nuts for Abyss. He almost kills Kid Cash on a bat body drop. Cash bells to the ring, avoiding the black hole slam. So much for that fun tag team. Today is screaming it in the back. It's Scott Hudson with D'Lo Brown. Scott Hudson says, no, it's not D'Lo Brown. It's Don Callis and his security team. He makes fun of D'Lo Brown's head shaking gimmick. Callis says, no matter what happens, he won't be paying for any jobber's medical bills, whether or not D'Lo Brown and Roddy Piper have an issue with it. Weird black and white promo now of the franchise Shane Douglas claiming he's forming a new franchise. He brags about starting shoot promos in wrestling. He almost looks like a failed Nasty Boys member here. Sin Bodhi has recovered from his darting earlier and he's out now to wrestle Raisin in a dog collar match. Or at least I think it's a dog collar match. Sin doesn't seem to be chained up, so who knows. It only goes a couple of minutes. Raven obviously wins with the Raisin effect. He hangs Sin, but Mitchell smacks him with his cane. The Slash Man saves Mitchell with a final cut. Raven wakes up and he lassoes Slash. Looks pretty clean, actually. Raven once again has Mitchell. Now Vampiro's here, looking like Eddie Slapnut Edwards. Raven is killed and they take him to the back. He's hung from a balcony. CM Punk runs out and shoves them away and hugs Raven. Mike Tanay says that he's proud to make the next huge announcement, and that is that the NWA TNA will be presenting their first three-hour pay-per-view event, Bound for Glory. In the back, AJ Styles and the Don't Look at My Ass crew. AJ says that tonight he's not going to be teabagged by Dusty as Umaga laughs. Whoa, Vince Russo walks up and he's drunk. He's screaming that he loves AJ Styles. He tells AJ to humiliate the old man tonight. Well, that was unexpected. Here we go then, the main event nobody could ever possibly want to see. Dusty Rhodes challenging for the NWA heavyweight title which belongs to AJ Styles. Everyone is laughing at how embarrassing Russo is with his drunk antics. Yeah, this isn't about to go well. The bell rings and there's still 20 minutes on the clock. Is this seriously about to go 20 minutes? AJ is a bumping machine for Dusty in the early going. Trinity is having to hold back the drunken Russo. Yeah, this one is long and it's hard to find anything positive to say about it. AJ misses a springboard 450. Dusty gets the figure four on. Ref bump. AJ hits Dusty with Russo's bat. He puts on the figure four and Dusty passes out as the ref ends the match. Russo starts screaming that Styles is still the champion. He says he wants to humiliate Dusty as Dusty humiliated AJ two weeks in a row. Russo has a belt, and Dusty has a bottle. They start beating Dusty down in the corner. Russo whips the security team. The Don't Look At My Ass team arrive and they also beat up Dusty. AMW try to make the save. AJ smashes them with a bat. Dusty is spread out in the ring as Russo whips his fat belly. He's screaming, take off his pants. No, please don't. Jeff Jarrett arrives, but he isn't in a hurry to help. He does eventually help and he hits all the hills of a chair. Russo screams that he's tried for a year to be his friend, but Slapnuts just won't listen. He vows to take Jarrett's title shot away. Dusty Rhodes also challenges Siaki, Russo and Umaga to a tag match next week as the show goes off the air. A real mixed bag there, some entertaining stuff on the lure card, but too much focus on stuff I don't actually want to see. Let's check out the next show. Well, we've seen this before. This is the show where TNA bragged about Jarrett attacking Hogan in Japan. I've made a whole video on that one, so we're not going over all that again. Raven attacks James Mitchell and tries to hang him before the new church make the save, and the Slash Man puts Raven through a table. Russo's here, looking like a hippie of his Don't Look At My Ass crew. He seems to be sober this week. Legend has now joined their crew for some reason. Russo says he has something big that he needs to do, and he asks everyone to keep away from him tonight. Sonny Siaki has the best music for the cage dancers to grind to. It sounds like Legend has taken Russo's place in this six-man match. They take on America's Most Wanted and The Dream. We start with Siaki and The Dream, which sounds like a made-up match. But no, it happens, and it doesn't go well for Don't Look At My Ass. Storm and Harris hit about five elbows to Siaki's arm. Siaki is thrown out the ring on top of Umaga. Then Storm dives on all three of the bad guys. Legend's in the ring now. No, no, no. The match breaks down. Siaki hits a super kick on the outside to Harris. Umaga eventually gets in and destroys Harris. 
Siaki does a net breaker whilst Dumago looks like he wants to bang him. Harris is isolated, but nothing exciting happens. Storm eventually gets the tag and he does well for a moment, but everyone climbs in the ring and AMW beat Legend with a death sentence. Enough said. Shane Douglas is laughing whilst groping two girls. I think he wants to put his little franchise inside them. Shawn Michaels' cousin brags about having two accolades to his name. He's disappointed that he's not being thrown a party tonight. He says he'll face Christopher Daniels tonight and calls him a geek. That match is next. Daniels and his crackhead crew take on Shane BK. Oh, talking of crackheads, wow, new cage dancers. They've really upped the quality here. It's hard to concentrate with these strange-faced people at ringside. I like talking to TNA fans. Franchise is scouting somebody, probably the cage dancers. Michael Shane hits a big flip dive out the ring. Daniels responds with a split-legged moonsault out the ring. Shane Douglas almost reached the point of climax of that one. Back at the ring, it's more of the same springy moves. It's heel versus heel, so the crowd are a bit dead for it. Daniels eventually hits the Angel's wings, but surprisingly, Shane kicks out. Shane wants to cheat, but a crackhead takes the belt away. Moments later, Daniels is sent into the crackhead and his belt, and Shane hits sweet chin music for the free. Michael Shane brawls with the crackheads until, of all people, Chris Saban runs him off. Maybe Saban needed a fix. Daniels and Saban argue, and it's over. Now, as I mentioned earlier, large parts of this show are dedicated to Slapnuts and Hogan in Japan. Slappy's in the ring now. He chats for ages about Hogan and things from WCW. Basically, he doesn't like Hogan and he doesn't trust him. This goes on for a while, until Hippie Russo runs from out of nowhere and spears Jarrett. They brawl into the crowd. This is random. Russo is now smacking him with a chair and sort of sends him for a table. Jarrett no-sells it as a cameraman is knocked down. Slappy has the chair and that's bad news for Russo. Don West says you just don't want to see a man out there who isn't a wrestler, and you also don't want to see a man get killed, but then again it's Vince Russo. No one helps Russo as he told his guys to stay away. What I want to know is why is this getting so much time? These two can't have a compelling match, so why feud? Shouldn't AJ Styles be in this spot? Slapnuts ties him to a cage and beats him with a trash can. I started to wonder where the security were, and here they are, they arrive. Oh no, they're gone again. Jarrett takes them out like Stone Cold. Jarrett hits Russo with about 20 more chair shots. Siaki and Umaga finally stop him. What did I just watch? AJ Styles is in the ring in an ugly brown beanie. He just stands there like a goon for a few minutes whilst Russo has helped away. Nothing happens and none of that made sense. Promo with Kevin Northcutt. He says Don Callis isn't here tonight, but he will make an example out of Eric Watts tonight. The Terminator just stands there. Kevin Northcutt has a Piper interview on tape apparently, but TNA says they will no longer show Piper's interview, and he smashes it. And here he is, Kevin Northcutt. He's not actually been that bad so far from what I've seen. Eric Watts has the two damaged security guards with him. Not very sensible for people struggling to pay their medical bills. Eric Watts starts with a head scissors and boots him out the ring. We cut away from the match to see Russo going into an ambulance. Does he really need more camera time? Watts does a dodgy looking Fez press. Northcutt shuts him down and nails a net breaker. Now it's a nice pump handle suplex for a two. The match slows down for a while. Watts hits a terrible looking choke slam. He punches out the Terminator and somehow this distracts the referee who stares at nothing at all. And Northcutt lands a smack with handcuffs for the three. What a horrible match. The red shirt security kills some more black shirt security members. All these guys look like they're landing on the backs of their heads. Then Don Harris returns. That is the largest pop of his career right there. He clears the ring. This guy's incredible. He's going to be the new main event that TNA need. Then Goldilocks returns too. She cuddles Eric Watts. It was previously hinted that these two are in love. The segment's over. This whole show is insane. The hits keep coming as the New York guys are out next. Wait, that isn't the gifted one. But the music is the same as theirs. It's Eric Young and Sanjay Dutt making his TNA debut. They face Jarrell Clark and El Fuego. Who? Never heard of him, he's certainly not from Burnham on Sea. What a weird match. Jarrell Clark and Sanjay are flapping around the ring like the hawk. They head scissors each other. Eric Young and El Fuego have the tag. Eric is a real showman, even in his second TNA match. He's also just great in the ring. Young hits a big belly to belly, but decides not to make a pin, which is a mistake as he's kneed in the back. Fuego takes him down with an armbar and tags out. Jarrell hits the sliced bread and a pump handle slam. Now he goes running and flipping like a nutcase. Eric Young ends up hitting them with a double Death Valley driver, a move he'd become known for. Young makes the tag, dual drop kick from Sanjay. Sanjay does a unique hurricanrana and a tornado DDT. The ring is cleared. Eric Young slides out the ring into a net breaker. 
everybody hits dives. This poor El Fuego guy, he just doesn't stand a chance for these guys in there. Jarrell Clark almost kills EY on a 6.30. Sanjay Dutt breaks the pinup. Moments later, he beats El Fuego with the Hindu press. Great stuff, but incredibly random. That's what I liked about spot matches back then. They never outstayed their welcome. Five minutes of non-stop action right here. In the back is the dancing Kid Cash. He calls the interviewer Scotty not so hotty. Kid Cash brags about beating legends and women, and now he's going to beat a giant. Kevin Northcutt arrives to deliver a message to him from Don Callis. We never find out what that message was. Here come the New York guys and the master of the cab driver slam, David Young. Swinger and the Diamond Man will be facing Danny, Doring, and Roadkill. Wow, the wrestlers just keep getting more and more random. This is an ECW matchup. Doring and Roadkill, the last ECW tag team champions. This match starts out a mess. The hills are cheating and the match breaks down 20 seconds in. Roadkill squashes the hills in the corner. Doring dives from the top out of the ring. Roadkill tries to dive off the ropes but smashes into the guardrail. Disco talks about how over David Young has gotten since hanging out with Gilberti. The Hills manage to get a two count off a double team. The Simon series gets the Diamond Man another two. Doring eventually manages a double underhook DDT and Roadkill is tagged in. Big sidewalk slam on Swinger and a side slam on Diamond. Now Roadkill flies in with a double clothesline. I love me some Roadkill. He hits a running power slam. Disco complains that they're supposed to be squashing these jobbers. He blames them for the death of ECW, which seemed a bit unusual. Danny Doring nails the panty drop leg drop. The heels are cheating and Doring falls in his nutsack. AMW rush out to stop the cheating and Danny Doring beats Swinger with a wacky pin. That was all strange. Raven is sat in a four-cornered room staring at the candles. As Raven tries to talk, his mic isn't working and all you can hear is the crowd chanting Disco sucks. Raven once again tells the gathering that he doesn't want their help. Once again, Punk starts cutting a promo and the camera cuts away. Someone seriously hates Punk. Kid Cash out now. I miss characters like this from wrestling. He takes on Abyss, who has Sabu's entrance music. This one should be fun. Abyss yanks him down straight away, but Cash is like a pit bull as he desperately attacks Abyss. Cash keeps running Abyss around the ring. Abyss shrugs off the Smash Mouth chair shot. Back in the ring, Abyss nails an insane throw into the air into a flapjack. He isn't done though and bear hugs Cash into an overhead suplex. Cash manages to stop him with an eyelash rake. Kid Cash keeps slapping Abyss to no effect. Abyss simply picks him up and slams him. For some reason, the monster tries a middle rope splash, which misses, of course. Kid Cash tries his own dive, which is stopped, and Abyss powerbombs him. For some reason, they decide to bump the ref so Cash can get a chair, even though he used one earlier. He smacks Abyss in the head, who waves his arms like a toddler learning to swim. Cash isn't strong enough to roll Abyss into a pin. He eventually manages it for a two count. Kid Cash has the chair again, but this time it's booted into his face. Cash slips out the bat breaker, but instead runs into the black hole slam, and that's the free. Abyss's music has changed again. It's an entertaining match, which I wish had gone a little bit longer. After the match, Cash throws powder into his eyes and uses a chair. The big man won't go down, so Cash boots him in the nutsack. Now he's down. Abyss manages to get the last word of a bat breaker. Talking of back, in the back, there's more stuff with the New York crew. Glenn Gilberti calls his guys an embarrassment for losing to two guys who ran ECW out of business. He says next week AMW will have to face a mystery tag team that are chosen by him. Tag match now is the Slashman and Vampiro teaming up against the Gathering. Slash dives out the ring and he's slammed to the floor straight away. He's also DDT'd on the floor. CM Punk heads as his Vampiro out the ring. Slash gets in the ring and tries a middle rope dive. Instead he gets Julio Cutter. The heels keep headbutting Punk, who looks a bit worse for wear in this match. Julio eventually gets the tag and hits a nice spinning full Nelson, but the ref is distracted. Vampiro misses a wacky dive and gets booted in the head. Julio stacks the slash man on his shoulders and Punk flies in with a nice double team, but the ref still has ADHD. Vampiro hits Julio with the nail in the coffin, and that short match is over. Raven rushes out and does a clunky beatdown on the heels. The Raisin combination takes them both out. Raisin desperately wants to get his hands on James Mitchell, but as usual, he's stopped. So no big match to end on. Instead, it sounds like we're going to end on the AJ Styles promo that's been hyped throughout the show. But for some reason, that never happens because Jarrett takes the time. He wants to talk about Hogan again. AJ does eventually interrupt his promo and they brawl for a couple of seconds and the show ends. Very poor hype for their title match. The show is incredibly unfocused. It should have been AJ and Russo's spot. Just not an amazing show because lots of the show was taken up with Hogan and Jarrett too. 
I guess in 2003, rightfully so. But hindsight is a wonderful thing, like a punch to the gut. Because we all know now this is a complete waste of time, as Hogan would never come to TNA in 2003. But every dog has its day, and if you don't agree with that, I'm going to make you pay.